Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will introduce you to the Elgamal public key encryption scheme, which was discovered by Tagir Elgamal back in 1985. It's a very interesting idea. Uh, Elgamal observed that defilement key exchange can be tailored uh, to not only perform key exchange, but also perform public key encryption. Okay, remember in public key encryption, you have sender and receiver. The receiver publishes its public key, right? Keeping the private key secret. Anybody can send a message if they know the receiver's public key. The receiver can decrypt the message because the receiver has the corresponding private key. That's the public key encryption scheme at a very, very high level. Okay, but let's dive into the details of how Tagir Elgamal's public key encryption scheme works. Uh, the, the way I explain it today is not exactly the way um, it's used. Uh, there are some uh, modifications we have to make to, to use it in practice. Uh, but at this point, it's, it's good enough to know the basic idea of Tagir Elgamal, which is quite a valuable algorithm for digital signature, oblivious transfer, and many, many in inventions are built on top of Tagir Elgamal's idea. Okay. All right. So let's get started. So there are three components. I put it in three boxes. One is the key generation component, another is encryption, and then it's decryption. So let's spend time walking through each of these boxes. Okay. How is the key generation algorithm works? It takes n as an input. What is n? n is the um, security parameter. For example, in this case, n is the order of the cyclic group size. Okay. Um, I am assuming you already followed all the videos on mathematical foundation that we have been talking about. Uh, we need a cyclic group G of prime order. Okay. Just to make it clear that Q is a prime number. And uh, n denotes the number of elements in your um, in your group, okay? Uh, you want to have um, many elements in your group uh, to have a good security, okay? For example, you want to have 256, uh, two power 256 elements in your group, um, in your cyclic group to, to avoid, um, you know, uh, attacks, okay? I will go into the details later, but at this point, assume um, you have a cyclic group G of prime order Q, and the n denotes the number of elements in your cyclic group. Okay, that, that's enough. Um, more precisely, n denotes the bit size of your cyclic group order. Okay, and you have a group generator G. Okay, of course, if you have a cyclic group, you need a generator for that. You need a G as a generator. And uh, in this algorithm, um, the key generation part randomly picks an element X from the from the group ZQ. Okay, ZQ remember is made of numbers from zero through Q minus one. Here I put R to show that X is randomly selected from this group. And H is computed by G power X, okay? All of them are um, according to whatever way multiplication is defined in that group that you're working with. G power X means uh, computing the power of G uh, to, the, uh, to X in whatever group G you are working with, okay? All right. Um, what is public key? The public key is basically the group G, the order of the group, Q, okay, that's the order of the group. Um, Q is the order of the group. Um, the group itself is called G, by the way. Q is the order of the group G. And a small g is the generator of the group. And H is the public key. H is computed by G power X, okay. The assumption is discrete logarithm. Uh, given H, it's difficult to find X. That's the reason why we publish H. Correspondingly, private key is just a X instead of H, of course. Okay, that's that's how the key generation algorithm works. So it generates public key and the private key. Um, of course, you will publish the public key. The, the recipient of the messages wanted to publish uh, his or her public key. Okay, so the, this public key is assumed to be known to the world. Okay, everybody in the world knows it. Assume like that. Of course, private key is only known to the owner of this the, this whole thing meaning X is hidden, hidden, okay? Only the owner would know the X, okay? Now let's talk about encryption. Suppose uh, you would like to send a message to somebody. All you need to know is their public key, okay? Which they have published to the world. G, Q, G, H is public. M is the message you would like to encrypt, okay? M is the message you wanted to send to the recipient. Let's look at how the encryption algorithm works. The first step in the encryption algorithm is you randomly pick an element from the group ZQ, okay, that's Y. 
and compute g power y that's that is stored in a comp, uh, variable c1 compute h power y times cm that's stored in a variable c2 okay and then you say c1 comma c2 as the cipher text for your encryption you send the cipher text to the recipient the recipient will recover um, your message m from c1 c2 as follows he takes your c2 and divide it by divided by c1 power x okay why would this work how is c2 computed c2 is computed by h power y times m right and how we how is c1 computed c1 is computed by g power y so we we do some simple math now g power x y in the denominator what is h h is computed by g power x so g power x y g power x y will cancel out and you will get m this is not a regular division this is the division in the group okay it could be mod inverse or something like that anyway and you see here the m was recovered by the decryptor all right so now let's think about uh, why is this uh, why is this secure okay i'm not going to do a formal proof in this segment i will uh, prove it uh, in the next segments but at this point it's good to think through some some security parameters okay uh, understand a little bit of security uh, in this context so from c1 c2 why can't an attacker recover m okay that that's a natural question to ask how is c2 computed c2 is computed by h power y times m y itself is uniformly chosen from the group zq therefore h power y is a uniformly chosen element okay so uh, in the group so this so you are multiplying a uniformly chosen element with m that means c2 itself is a uniformly chosen element from the group that means c2 is not easy to distinguish from a random group element okay therefore c2 is argued to not leak information about m that's the reason why um this is considered secure okay of course there is this overarching assumption that from h nobody can recover x that's the the belief of the world so far um uh, if that, that assumption is uh, questioned Uh, or if there is a way to to recover x from h then the whole thing is broken of course but that's something um we are going to assume forever for some time at least okay until the the world moves to quantum computer at this point um, it's assumption that from h you can't e extract x okay so that's basically it and we saw in the previous segment that if you have a message m and you multiply with you can imagine this is your key k okay nobody can recover m from c2 that's what i proved earlier in the previous segment perfect secrecy in the context of a cyclic group 